Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Tea Talks. I am your host Mata. If you're new here, Tea Talks is a series that uh, talks about the cultures and habits around tea from all over the globe. My guest today is Asya. She's a British Pakistani and uh, she's uh, one of our colleagues here at X. Hi Asya, thank you so much for joining us today. So would you please introduce yourself to everyone? Sure. Um, so I'm Asya, I'm from London and my parents are from Pakistan. Um, and I had this really fun multicultural upbringing. It was like 50% of this, 50% of that. <laughs> so I got to have both. And now I'm in the Netherlands and I'm studying computer science at mm. TU Delft. And you're also working here at Nex. I am, yes. I'm a program officer. It's oh, like it's, program officer. Okay. it's this weird complicated thing where we make fun events for students at X. <laughs> <laughs> Does sound fun. So which part of London are you from? Very central. Well, it's like southeast, but uh, it's extremely central. I'm like a 10 minute bus like from Buckingham Palace, basically. Ah, okay. Yeah. So you drink tea with the Queen? <laughs> uh, I wish I did, but I absolutely <laughs> don't. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think um, when a lot of people hear British, they do quintessentially related to tea, um, but it's also not a plant native to England, right? Like many other things, we stole it from other parts of the world. Uh, our culture mostly consists of stuff we've stolen. I should not be saying this, but I will say it. Um, and yes, tea is something that was brought over from China mm. many years, years, centuries ago. I think uh, it's just shy of 400 years. That's yes. uh, what I found. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and since then, we've absolutely been addicted to it. Mm. But slowly and steadily, there is a change coming over where they're transferring to coffee, which oh. freaks me out. I hate coffee. <laughs> uh, but yes, it is still a big, big part of the mm. culture. And uh, do you usually go to like tea houses or like coffee houses? We do have really cute little tea shops. That is actually a thing. And you get these little rose printed china cups and it's so pretty. Uh, but again, it's like slowly dwindling away and it's mm. really sad. Um, but no, it, that is still something that happens, except that you're seeing more Starbucks popping up everywhere. Ah, okay. The Americans are taking over. <laughs> and what is your objection towards the transition to coffee? Is it just the it's, bitterness of it? or I think personally, I just never got along with it. Mm. As a kid, I was never allowed to drink it because my mom was like, it will make you hyper, this and that. So I never really drank it. And uh, by the time I got independent and I could actually get coffee, I realized I don't want it anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I've just never really been a coffee person. And from your Pakistani heritage, yes. also tea drinkers? I'd say it's stronger than the British side mm. uh, because tea is life there. It's like you'll have it five times a day. You start your day with tea, then you have multiple cups during the day. And it's always a social thing though. You'll never like see someone just sitting in a corner sipping the cup of tea. It's You'll always just meet a person and be like chai. Like mm. that's the word for tea for us. And that's the first thing people do when they get together. That's it. I know that uh, in companies in Iran, uh, the janitorial staff is yeah. also responsible for, they bring tea all the time to like workers yeah. and everyone and employees. So is that also something like that happens in Pakistan? Like every uh, hour there's like a tea round? Yes, 100%. It's ongoing. And um, as, as women, it, like the way the society is uh, set up over there, we are traditionally more in the kitchen than the men. And it's the first thing every girl learns how to make mm. tea. It's like you're five years old, you can barely reach the stove and you're just sitting there like, um, how much do I pour in? What do I do? <laughs> and yeah, that's just how we learned how to make our tea. And it's a huge part of the culture there. So how many teas will you be making for us today? Two. Um, one will be Earl Grey, which mm. is my standard English tea. I think everyone's had it at one point <laughs> true, or another. True. The other is chai, this mm. nice simple chai. Um, there's okay, there's multiple kinds of chais, and I think it's become a little lost in the cur current day Western culture because again, you can just go and buy chai tea, mm. which if you literally translate it, it's just tea tea. tea. tea yeah. And I'm like, what does that mean? What are you trying to sell us? Uh, what I'm making is dood pati. It's mm -hmm. like just made purely in milk. And it's so nice. You add a little bit of cardamom and it's lovely. I am really looking forward to it. <laughs> Great.
here we have the Earl Grey. Um, will you walk us through how you make it? I know that some people think it's super <laughs> simple, but just walk us through anyway. I will. I mean, there's the easy way, the cheating way, which I've started doing since I've moved alone away from my family, which is tea bags. They mm. save your life. Uh, you just pop in a tea bag, some hot water, and you're good to go. But um, properly, it's just you literally take the loose leaf tea and you're supposed to brew it for like a good seven to ten minutes. Oh, it okay. depends on how strong you like the taste. Um, Earl Grey does have a bit of a bitter undertone. Mm -hmm. So some people just honestly, like after three minutes, they've had enough of the brewing. I like it strong. Um, I don't put milk in my Earl Grey, but some people do. I do put in a healthy amount of sugar. Mm -hmm. I like it sweet. I heard that Earl Grey is kind of a dessert tea because you sweeten it and you kind of eat it with some sort of pastries and things. Yeah. So we do have some sort of cake here. Yes. <laughs> uh, is this like a typical uh, like tea companion it for is. The Earl Grey? It is. It okay. is just nice or like just plain vanilla butter cake is mm. always good. Marble cake is good. Traditionally, shortbread biscuits mm. are the thing, but I couldn't find any. I really tried, <laughs> but I couldn't find any. Um, because usually I just get them through the post, but good old COVID, the post isn't really working that True. well. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> so also something that is quintessentially British, yes. um, etiquette <laughs> and rules and what you're <laughs> yes. supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. So what is some of the proper ways of drinking tea that people actually follow? Like what are some rules? Okay. So if you follow the media on this, you'll think that people actually like stick their little pinky finger out and whatnot <laughs> honestly that doesn't happen anymore okay. i'm sure the queen drinks like that but other than the, <laughs> the her not many people do in my case it's a little convoluted mm. because i grew up in in a, in an environment which was very multicultural mm. cultural so it's um i grew up in a house where they would be talking in punjabi and urdu and then i'd be drinking earl grey so it like I learned my own etiquette when it comes to tea, but in general, uh, in within London at least, it's again a social drink. Mm -hmm. You have it w when you're with people. You have it alone at breakfast as well to wake up. Uh, but the main thing is you take it slow, you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Tea isn't something you rush through. I think that's the biggest etiquette rule. I can tell. So you're not supposed to like blow on it. No, no, no. And just like just drink it and get no, up. No, okay. not not at all. You just take it slow. You enjoy every sip. <laughs> so milk and sugar. Yes. Um, how much do you? What is your preference with? So no milk. I I get really pissed off when people are like. Some people just put in half milk, half water, and I'm like, why? What are you getting out of this? <laughs> um, but uh, sugar can I can be quite liberal with it. It mm. really depends on how I'm feeling about my body. If I'm having a bad body day, I'll be like, nah, let's give the sugar. But usually I'm okay with it. Um, and yeah, milk, not in Earl Grey. English breakfast tea is also another very common tea, which mm. people usually literally have for breakfast to yep. wake up. It's high on caffeine. Uh, with that, go crazy on the milk. Put in half milk, I, that's completely fine, but not with this. Shall we take a sip? Yes. <laughs> Do go it a bit. So you did add one uh, teaspoon of sugar I did. to this. I did. Well, it is sweetened or gray. <laughs> it is sweetened or gray, yes. <laughs> no, I like it. I, I think it's a very stable like type of tea that it you is. can drink in any um, time of the day. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's comforting. And it's quite nice. common in the Netherlands as well, actually. True, yeah. Like, I've had it so many times, every single bar I go to or whatever, like, I'll just, when I want something non-alcoholic, it's the best option. Mm. And uh, you have no problem using tea bags. That's no, right. absolutely. I'm not a snob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with tea bags. Okay, so let's move on to yes. the, uh, what did you call it, the Pakistani tea? Just chai, dupati. Dupati. Yes. Okay.
so funny that with the first one, not milk. With this one, a lot of milk. Pure no milk. water, yes. pure milk. <laughs> yes. So would you walk us through, how did you make this Yes, one? so with this one, it's dood pati, which literally translates to milk tea. Mm -hmm. um, and I put in a healthy amount of milk, put in some uh, pati, which is, Honestly, I've never really found out what it is because I grew up using it. It's mm -hmm. just loose leaf black tea. Okay. But it's somehow not like English loose leaf black tea. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on this. I don't know why, but it's just different. Perhaps a different plant. Yeah, probably. Or di But black tea. Yes, black tea. Uh, so you put in a bit of that, a bit of sugar, a bit of pure cardamom, mm -hmm. I use that as well. You can also put in cinnamon, but cinnamon personally makes me want to vomit, so I never <laughs> use it. And then we have some, uh, for dessert, we're using cake rusk, mm -hmm. uh, which is spelled as R-U-S-K, but the K is silent, it's just rusk. And you're supposed to dip it inside and then mm, have okay. it. So is it kind of a biscuit or it kind of looks like um, like a croquant bread, <laughs> you know? It's a very sweet croquant bread. Uh. Uh, I said a Dutch word, wow. Um, it's, it's, it's a biscuit. It's mm. a very Pakistani biscuit. And with mm. the cardamom, I saw that you opened it. Yes. So you're supposed to like open them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You open them in the little black pods, they go inside and then obviously you make sure you filter the tea out because it's horrible mm. if you actually crunch on one of those True. little cardamoms. Yeah. Spoils your day. The taste doesn't go away for eight hours. But yeah. Wow, really? Yeah, it's, it's really oh, strong. Okay. So mm. may I offer you? Yes. <laughs> Thank there you. There you go. I will also try one. So we dip, and how many times are you supposed to dip? As long as it gets soaked, you're good to go. All right, let's see. I like it. It is still quite sweet. So you it did is. also add sugar. I did, I did, mm. I did. This was so wonderful, Asia. Um, do you have any final remarks or statements? You would something you would like to share with us? I think we managed to not point out my cups, <laughs> and I'm really proud of them because look, it's Gryffindor, and that I think one mine is, is the tea and from nine and three quarters, and I am utterly obsessed with Harry Potter. So like tea and Harry Potter go hand in hand for Very me. Very British of you. <laughs> And yeah. Um, so who's your favorite character? Dobby. Dobby. I, am, I love, I keep doing those personality quizzes for Harry Potter. And Dobby comes out? No, he's never. <laughs> and I just keep like doctoring my answers so that I can be Dobby one day. And that will be the happiest day on earth for me. Honestly, I, I don't think Dobby is one of the options because I think not a lot of people would like, yeah. Why? <laughs> he's so cute. But anyway, like Dobby is adorable and uh, I wish that the Netherlands slowly transfers onto tea more than coffee. Yes. The happiest person. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, thank you for watching everyone, uh, if you are interested in more episodes, they are all on our YouTube channel and if you would like to talk about your tea culture uh, with us, you can send us an email at hosts-x at zudof.nl and uh, we'll be happy to have you with us. Thank you and see you in the next episode. Bye!